hi viewers and welcome once again to my channel and if you are new here don't forget to hit the notification bell so that in any time i post a content you'd be alerted or notified and it's also a way of showing support to the work i'm doing all right so today i'll be talking about how to email professors for grad school funding um, but then i'm going to divide the video into two folds um, the first part would be how to actually identify professors who have funding and then the second part would be how to email this so to begin with how do you get to hear of funding opportunities um, it's very easy one common way of doing so is through um, the website um, find a phd so with the find a phd website they have the same for find a master's find a postdoc etc so this website actually shows you openings um, that is um, schools or faculty members who are willing to accept students or um, postdocs for their respective labs so if i click on this link find a phd and the first thing you would want to do is to type in your area of interest or the field in which you want to do your studies in for example if you are someone looking to do something in engineering you would want to key in engineering here if it's biology for example you would want to put in biology and so um, when you hit enter you are going to find out all the different openings that are available so you would want to look down here and you notice that for this particular um, scholarship it requires the applicants to be european or uk students to be accepted for funding um, same with same with this particular um, school here it says it wants only self-funded phd students and when you come to this um, school the international max planck research school you'd notice that the funded program is for students worldwide so if you're an international student like me you would want to look at an opportunity like this so when you, when you hit on the link it gives you the full details of the um, opportunity or the scholarship opening so you would have to read everything here this the amount you'd be given as your um, stipend and then the how to apply page is very important because that is how you get to know exactly how to go about your application so when i click on this link this advert states that the faculty members who are willing to take students are the ones that are listed through the, via that link so these are the people looking for students so for example if i'm interested in working with this professor i click on his name it takes me to his lab website or his lab page and it tells me what he's doing and what he currently has funding for this is what he's looking at so here you go this is one way of finding out and the next stage of course would be to know what he does read about his work which i'm going to tackle in a minute so using the website find a phd find a master's or even scholarship positions would help you to stay up to date with the opportunities or the scholarships that are available for students to explore another thing you would want to do is because you can't be coming to this website almost every day, you would want to be part of their mailing list. So for both scholarship position and find a PhD, there's an opportunity to join the mailing list. So that whenever there's an opening, you'd be emailed and you'd get an alert as to the different opportunities for you to apply. So how do you subscribe? For the website find a PhD, you hit sign up. Then just like you fill in any form, you'd key in your email address and next you just follow up with the um, different steps that would pop up and that is how you subscribe to their mailing list so that each time there's an opening you'll be emailed so don't forget the websites find a phd find a master's find a postdoc and also scholarship positions all right also it's not everyone who would want to go through this approach of going through scholarship position sometimes you would want to apply to the school directly or the university directly because from your own research or from information you've gathered from senior colleagues or professors some schools would give you direct admissions even without going through the scholarship position websites or the find a phd websites to know of openings you can sometimes apply to the schools directly but for phds it's very tricky there are some schools where you can apply directly into the program and you are going to get your admissions other schools would require you to write to the professor ahead of time to help you increase your chances of getting into the program how do you find the faculty members and how do you even get to find their emails so let's say i want to enroll in the university of alabama vision science program for example so i'll just key in uab vision science program 
when you go to each school's website and you go to the department you are interested in there should be a page for staff or faculty and when you go to faculty too you would want to look at those who are into research and um, so for example i click on people and then these are their areas of focus so i click on ocular biology and then i get to see all the different faculty members who are doing research in ocular biology so let's say i'm interested in working with marina gobatiok i click on her name and by clicking on her name you realize that her email address just pops up so now you have her email address and you'd want to email her but before emailing her you also want to know what she's working on before you email her because remember these professors receive about hundreds of these type of emails on a daily basis so you'd want to do your homework well before you email them so for example if i want to know what marina gobachok is working on currently one easy way of doing it is to just go to um google scholar and you enter the professor's name marina um, gobachok this is the link to her personal um profile now you realize that it shows you all her publications but then this format is arranging it in descending order according to the most cited papers she has so you'd want to hit on year so that's going to arrange it with the most recent papers on top so this is what she's currently working on and remember if you see the professor's name as the first author or the last author then there's a higher probability that the professor is the one working on that research but usually if you find their names in the um, middle or in between the first and the last then it's possible that they are collaborators they are just helping someone or collaborating with someone to do a particular work but most likely if you find them as the first authors or the last authors then that work is coming from their lab there's a high chance that the work they are doing is coming from their labs so if you're in any background engineering whatever background it may be whatever school you're interested in narrow down to the department you want to get into look for the staff the faculty members go through their research so i hate marina go back to and yes um so here i have her email address also if i read um her profile it tells me about her education it gives me um, insights into what her research interest is and so you notice that you would be able to find these details from the school's website now um so for any school you are in feel free to explore the school's website read about the professor if you're interested in their work you want to know what they do hit um, google scholar look for their current work and then you get a lot of insight into what they are doing currently because it's very important and you notice that when you're writing your emails to them this is going to play an important role showing that you really know what they do another way of also knowing whether the supervisors have funding is by knowing the funding sources of whichever program you are trying to get into for that particular pi for example, I'm in a program that has to do with um, health sciences. So I know that one of the major funding agencies is the NIH, which is the National Institute of Health in the US. So there's this website called NIH Reporter. So once I hit NIH Reporter, it comes up with this query form. So for example, I've gone to any school that I want to check. I've checked the faculty members. I suspect that the professor does something that has to do with um, human health. I can enter their names so the instruction is last name then first name so for example I hit Robert York then I hit Marina so I hit enter so by doing so I get to know of her current grant and she has a grant that is currently ongoing so once you hit on the project title then you can read and know what the PI is doing and so by having all this information the next thing you'd want to do is to be able to read their work to understand what they are doing you don't really need to be able to understand it hardcore like they will you just need to be able to have a fair idea of what they do so for example let's say i'm interested in retinal diseases i do not know which particular retinal disease i'm interested in but let's say in ghana there's a retinal inflammation that stems from um, toxoplasmosis so i would want to look at um, a faculty member who does something that has to do with inflammatory diseases in the retina and now remember you don't always need to pursue your research interest during your phd but then it should be so close such that the skills you get from your phd will be transferable to your um, future career so like i'm saying 
I want to do something about retinal inflammation stemming from toxoplasmosis. But in this school that I'm looking at, for example, UAB, there's no one doing such a thing. So I'd want to look at a lab whereby I can get skills that would help me do such a thing. So I'd want to look at someone also doing inflammatory diseases of the retina. Someone looking at general diseases of the retina. I would want to consider such people as the people I would want to write to. So now this is the most important part. Sending your email to the professor. How do you go about it? Remember, you have to be brief, you have to be concise. So, how do I make my subject even catchy so that when the professor sees my email, the professor would pay attention to my email? So, what I do is, I usually caption my subject as prospective. PhD student. So if you're looking for a master's, you can make it a prospective master's student, whatever it may be. Now remember, at this stage, you would have read the professor's work, you know what they are doing, you know their current funding. So you would want to now address them. So I start with, hi, doctor, whoever you want to write to, it can be, hi, professor, this, hi, doctor, this, you write their names, you write, you write the person's name. So your first paragraph is to market yourself because you want the professor to read that introduction and be like, wow, this is interesting. Let me keep reading about the student. So I start by checking up on the professor asking, I hope this email finds you well. Then I introduce myself, my name, my school, my credentials, my qualifications. You talk about it in the first paragraph so that it catches the professor's attention that they would be hooked to it and would want to read further. Now in the next paragraph, um, I talk about what I'm currently doing, what I have done that I think would tie into their research. So I don't state it explicitly and I put this in there so that when the professor reads it, even before saying it, the professor can actually tell or align my interest with what he or she is doing. So for example, I say for the past year, I've been working with so so and so, I've been doing this particular research, I've been doing this, I have been working on my master's to do this, I've been working on my other undergrad, this was the thesis I did. You say something that shows that you are really a good fit or you can really do the work they are doing. So you state all of these in your next paragraph. Then you'd want to continue by talking about your interests. So you've already stated your prior experience, all that you have that you are bringing on board. So now what does a professor have that you want to tap into? So in this paragraph, you tell them about your interest. You tell them why you selected them. And of course, you selected them because the work they do, you think you'd be a good fit for it. So remember earlier, I had stated what I had done in the past. So here, as you talk about their work you've read on, you, you can you can actually cite the paper you read and tell them about how you found it interesting, why it's actually interesting to you. So you just don't say the work is interesting. You tell them about why it's interesting, keeping in mind that with your prior experience and where you want to go, what you seek to achieve, what you want to do in that person's lab would be a stepping stone that would help usher you to that particular stage of your career you want to get into. Now with my last paragraph, I don't tell the professor that I will wrote to the professor to find out if he had funding for a student because if you do that, it makes you seem so desperate. It makes it seem like the reason for contacting the professor is not really the professor's work that he or she is doing, but because you just want funding for graduate school. So I just leave it as I'm writing to you to find out from you if you are willing to accept students for the fall or the spring or summer semester of whichever timeline you are looking at because once the professor tells you that he or she has an opening most likely it will come with funding so you do not need to go asking for funding you just ask are you willing to accept students into your lab for fall or whatever it may be then i just conclude by telling the professor that i'm willing to talk if the professor wants to have a skype call with me if the professor wants to contact me again with regards to things i've said or wants to know me further i'm up for a skype call a phone call if the professor needs references to speak to i can provide them now another good thing to do here is you can decide to attach your cv and so when you attach your CV, you are going to stand out compared to other people because if you send just your email, the professor might decide to reply or not to reply. But once you have your CV, if it's appealing enough, then it places you above the other students who didn't send in a CV. So when the professor reads your CV and is very interested or impressed with your work, then there's a higher chance that this professor will reach back to you and try to set up an interview or something with you. So like I said earlier, 
it's not every school that you need to contact professors there are some schools that would explicitly state this on their website so this approach would work for schools that do that other than that go ahead and put in your application into a pool of applications for a phd masters whatever it may be but one thing also you need to do is you need to contact the program managers of the various schools and then write to them and find out from them you tell them you are interested in the program you want to apply for maybe fall of 2020 but i want to find out from them if their program comes with funding once you are admitted if they get back to you and say no you can ask them so what are the other opportunities you can explore some will tell you that there's an, a separate application once you get into the program we give you a separate application so feel free communicate with the program managers do not be scared these people are there to respond to you they are there to help you with your application process so Go ahead, contact them as many times as you want to. Let them know at what stage you are in your application, what your worries are, and they'll definitely get back to you. So I've given you two different ideas. One for the situation where you need to write to the supervisor, which is what I have covered here. And the other approach is when there's nothing like that, you just need to put in an application. Then the program managers and administrators will be your best bet by communicating with them to know what the program has. Now with all done and said, I have a very important information. Please and please and please again, do not go to a particular school and write to all the professors in that department telling every professor that I've read your work, I'm interested in your work. Because remember, these professors interact with each other. They communicate with the program managers. For example, if I contact Professor A, Professor A might send my, uh, my email to the program manager. If I do same with Professor B, Professor B will send my email to the program manager. The program manager will not find me to be a serious person, yet alone to spend time to reply to my email. Because it's clear I do not have any sense of direction or I do not know what I want. So if you want to write to professors in a particular department, make sure that the professors you are targeting to write to are people who have an interest that overlaps, not people who do very divergent things. Even if it's biology, once you're talking about a professor who is doing something in maybe the retina, you can't write to another um, professor in the same um, department who is doing something, let's say, in the cornea or the lens. So you have to take all this in consideration when you are writing to the professors so that you are taken as a serious person. So that is my advice to you and feel free to interact in the comment section. I pay close attention to the comments. I try to give feedback as much as I can. I have a link to my Facebook profile in my channel at on my channel page so if you click on that also you can communicate with me on facebook and i'll be glad to share my experience or to help in my next video i'll be talking about how to apply to some particular scholarships in canada the us and australia so please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also hit the notification bell that appears so that each time i upload the content you get a notification so goodbye and see you next time when i upload another content bye